Hey everybody, how you doing this fine evening? Uh, of course, of course, I'm filming on a day that the snow is it. Um, uh, you can't really see out the window, but I can. But literally, I'm I'll tell you this right now, the snow is literally up to my window. I'm I kid you not. But anyway, um, that's not what I'm here today. Today I'm doing another Dream Point series. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I apologize, and there's a reason why because I've been trying to do. Uh, both my own personal work. I've also been trying to wait and do some research for Andy's Dream Point series. So finally, today I'm doing the Yes Man. Yes, yes, for Daniel Bryan. Why not? Okay. And in fact, of course, the whole world's been buzzing. Um, uh, of course, obviously, people are concerned. They're, they're thinking, okay, is Daniel Bryan ever coming back? But you know what? There's always hope for Daniel Bryan as Royal Rumble is is upon us um it's wrestlemania season so i hope he's back but anyway so there's a reason why it took me this long to make a dream opponents list for daniel bryan because i have modified this list three times now three times because i had to really dig and really think really hard on like some opponents that and that i think that would best him and uh, in a good way would give him a good match and and just go out and there and just, like you no know, just entertain the fans okay so uh um, okay, um, without any further ado, let's dive right in. Um, um, let's see, uh, wait, not much else I can think of for Daniel Bryan. You all know him, uh, one of the greatest, um, independent superstars, compete all over the world, compete in Ring of Honor, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, over the world, like I said, Pro Wrestling Noah, all the good stuff. He held the Ring of Honor Championship for like 490 plus days. Uh, then of course, we come to, uh, uh, WRE, um, come, he was a member of the Nexus, they became, you know, they won several different championships, and, and in fact, he became, he is now a grand champ, grand slam champion, holding the Intercontinental, the U.S., the Tag Team Championship, and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yes, and and, and, a, and a consecutive time of in my opinion, I think in five, six years already. It, feel, it feels like forever. It's been so long that he's been with the company. It's it's amazing, and of course, so why why not? But anyway, let's get get down to the degree. Okay, here here are my top ten drill points for Daniel Bryan. All right. Um, Kicking off this list is at number ten is Kalisto. Yes, um, one half of the Lucha Dragons, of course, uh, just recently um, a former United States champion. Um, believe it or not, I have seen this guy wrestle before, like on the independent scene, before he ju jumped up to the m m main roster of WWE, and like he is a true talent. He is a, such a great high fire. He's literally a a a a prodigy of both of the high flying Lucha Libre style, and like, um, I can definitely see Daniel Bryan mix up with a guy like Kalisto. Okay, um, I was hesitant to put Rey Mysterio on this list, but then I realized that technically they, uh, Daniel Bryan and Rey Mysterio have faced off before, but it wasn't that good of a confrontation. But in all, in all honesty, um, since Kalisto is much younger, he's more fresh, and against a much wily veteran now, Daniel Bryan, I can definitely see some magic happening. They're both well depth and high flying, but let's see. Well. But boils down to the edge will kind of go to Daniel Bryan, obviously because of his martial arts background. Whereas Kalisto is just well dipped and just just big high fly, high flying in the traditional lucha stuff. It would be a, a true clinic, but also like say in my opinion, almost I don't know, almost a fair, somewhat fair playing ground. Although, like I said, high flying edge that would be their, their both their strong suit, but the one edge. Go with Joe to Daniel Bryan. I would love to see him mix him up. And def a definite classic and something I would definitely see. Number number nine, uh, Rob Van Dam. Yes, the Mr. Monday Night uh, or Mr. Pay Per View, Mr. Thursday Night, whatever you want to call, call him. Yes, I'm putting, I put Rob Van Dam on this list because, um, in a sense, um, RVD was is like my opinion the predecessor before Daniel Bryan. Well, yeah, if you can't think about it. The guy was. Very well, much well adept in martial arts before he ever moved to professional wrestling. Actually, okay, um, he held, he, he was he's trained in a few different fighting styles. Actually, uh, judo, I believe, boot and jiu jitsu. It's it's it's, cra it's crazy. And like, um, not to mention throwing RVD's high flying hardcore style, and you get something amazing against Daniel Bryan's rough, rugged martial arts style trainings. So definitely, there is some definite even footing right there with the martial arts uh, style backgrounds. The high flying edge would kind of go to RVD since he's got the devastating f five star frog spot. You know, Bryan's got the headbutt. They're both devastating in their own right, but I would m m my vote gets RVD. Right there, but who knows? Oh, who knows maybe a day on Brian RVD would, would turn out to be a good classic, definitely something worth worth looking forward to. Coming at number eight is Kyle O'Reilly, one half of the uh, Red Dragon tag team. Yes, um, 
I was hesitant to put him on the list, but then I realized, you know what? Why why the hell not? Okay. Daniel Bryan's faced um other other guys in similar to Kyle Rowley. He's faced guys like A. Edwards. He's or Barry, he's teamed up with A. Edwards. He's teamed with David Richards. He's competed against Bobby Fish, um Kyle Rowley's tag team partner, but he's never faced Kyle Rowley before. And that would be pretty cool seeing um a guy trained by a rival um, you know, camp or rival promoter against Daniel Bryan, who was trained by Neil Melanson, who who, who was believe it or not in a lineage following you, you know, to um, you uh, George LaBelle, actually. So that's kind of interesting there. If you kind of think about that, if you've read Daniel Bryan's book, which I highly recommend you should, okay, against Kyle Riley, who's kind of like at the opposite end of the spectrum, who's trained with. Um, other guys, you know, that kind of thing. So, it's a sense of, let's see, would this be a wrestling match, or would this be an MMA match? I'd love to see a hybrid fight, um, style fight match, kind of like what cut between Kyle Rowley and Adam Cole from Best in the World a couple years ago, and uh, hopefully it wouldn't be too bloody, because, my God, I've watched that twice now. Ugh! it's It still gets me every time, okay? But anyway, but definitely, I would love to see something happen right then and there. But, uh, who would win? I don't know. Let them go the distance. Put on a match. Just tell a story right then and there. Okay? There you go. Book it. No, coming at number seven, the R-rated Superstar Edge. Okay? Um, technically, uh, these two have faced, like, maybe uh, uh, in one confrontation form or another, but... But the but the match uh, ended in a in a very poor horrible finish. But uh, in overall, I'd love to see a very good classic cut between Edge and Daniel Bryan. But of course, obviously Edge has retired from the ring. But but if there was any other opponent that I think Edge would definitely mix it up in the ring with, I would definitely love to see him mix it up with Daniel Bryan for a in a good good match and have like a solid winner. Okay, think about it, Daniel Bryan. His martial arts style background, Ed, Edge with him being being trained a young Canadian trained, you know, pro, um, prodigy. Um, well, of the time, come on, it's take take the best of both worlds. Throw throw him in a blender, we could we could get another potential good good match. Like right? yes, a nerf, maybe a hybrid style match, maybe or hell, maybe they can mix it up and maybe go do a two out of three falls match. I, I don't I don't care. Some that would be some kind of cool match right there, right then and there. A good way to tell a true. Good story right then and there, and like just see who who's at the top of their game, and see if, if Edge, you know, would still have it if this happened. <clears throat> Commit number six is Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. Yes, um, and like I said, Olympic gold medalist, not today's Kurt Angle. Which, in all honesty, my God, seriously, um, he really, he really, I think in all honesty, he really, he really just needs to step away from the ring. If, I think he already has, but if he hasn't, he really should. His knees are fucked up, part of my language. Yeah, yes, okay. I've seen him on some good matches like earlier in TNA's lifestyle. Come, um, in fact, that in, in my opinion, say what you want about Impact Wrestling. Um, Kurt Angle's feud with Samoa Joe, in my opinion, was was the feud of that fucking company. Okay, it was awesome. Okay. So, I don't care what anyone else says, okay? That was a good match, okay? I still remember it, okay? Uh, so, yeah. But anyway, in a sense, I would kind of see a match between Triangle and Daniel Bryan be kind of just like that. Although, n not on a shit level of that of that deplorable lethal lockdown match where it was just an MMA match in a cage. It was stupid. It would just be a technical drag out, you know, good wrestling match, like a very good technical wrestling match, but although, obviously, the edge, I would get go to Daniel Bryan with the martial arts game, but Krangle's more adept than submission fighting and, and mat wrestling, so the edge would go to Krangle, so kind of got a fair balance there, but definitely, Daniel Bryan they, he can reach into his bag of tricks and pull, pull, pull something off against Krangle, same thing with Krangle, he can also, he can take to the, yeah, I've seen him pull up those moonsaults, and, but also, those are, that's what's, re, that's one of the reasons why his knees are hurting him these days, because he keeps doing that, but anyway, other than that, I could definitely see those two just mix it up and just have an, an awesome clinic, okay, right then and there, book it, I don't care if it's WWE, TNA, or Global Force, I really don't care, that would be a cool, cool match. Coming at number five, we're at the halfway point, Brett the Hitman Hart. Okay, I had to put Brett on this list for a couple reasons. Why? Because, like, um, Brett, like I said, he is the greatest storyteller. He's a he's good in the ring at what he does. He, and, like, uh, and ser seriously, any good, ma any good opponent that he's been in the ring with, he can make him look good. In a sense, they can make Brett look good. So, in a sense, if take what Brett Hart has done all the years and put him in the ring against Daniel Bryan, we could get see some re a real classic match. It may be no 
Bret Hart Bulldog match from from SummerSlam, but something what I would definitely look forward to. And of course, obviously, um, obviously this would be obviously in Bret's prime. Of course, uh, Bret's semi retired these days, but still, that would that would be a cool freaking match. Ma imagine Hart, come on, Bret Hart Sharpshire against. Daniel Bryan's Yes Walk or the Bell Walk, whatever the frick you call it these days, okay? It would all boil down to that. I would definitely see a submission match or or maybe a last man standing match or just any way technical match. I would definitely see forming between these two guys. Totally worth it, okay? I think we should. Something I would definitely look forward to. Coming at number four, Finn Bauer, okay? Um, but we're not, let's see. Um, Daniel Bryan has fit, competed. Or has competed in Japan, but he's never competed against Finn Bauer. I don't think I'm maybe, but but of course that was back when Finn. If they did, that was probably back when uh, Finn Bauer's maybe you know just Prince Devitt. He was just you know just a rising talent, just a you know just a, this sturdy stubble guy from Dublin, Ireland. But now look at Finn Bauer. Now he's the demon. He's the ch NXT champion, and just. I would love to see something like that happen. Haven't seen Dan Daniel Bryan and Finn Bauer being a ring at the same time. Come on. That would be cool. It's essentially I, 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 like a strong style match. Two guys from that that have grown up on like two different sides of the globe that competed in Japan that also have that same similar style background. It's essentially like a battle of attrition. Essentially, it's like who can top who. Okay, I would definitely see a good match right then and there. Um, but definitely, um, let's see. The edge would kind of go to uh, uh, Finn Bauer. He's got the coup de gras, which is very devastating. It's a diving double stomp. Seriously, um, I've seen more devastating de double stomps, but that would be it. Um, you got Daniel Bryan's uh, yes lock. Um, let's see. Finn Bauer also, also has some other moves in his bag of tricks, including you know his Prince's Throne move, move the pe the pelly kick, you know the soccer ball kick, whatever you want to call it. And of course, and of course, my favorite move of Finn Balor's repertoire, which I don't think we've seen seen already, is Bloody Sunday. It's essentially a a D a a D T suplex. I forget. It's a interesting combination, but it's devastating. See, if Finn Balor was able to pull that off against Daniel Bryan, that would be something cool. Okay, but then again, then again, I would just love to see Daniel Bryan just go out there and have a good fight with Dan, with Finn Balor. Okay. Something I would definitely be worth watching. Coming number three, the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar. Okay, I had to put Brock Lesnar on this list. Why? Why not? It's something that I think people would would want to see. You know, about a year or two ago. Come on, if uh, you know, if uh, you know, Daniel Daniel Bryan, yeah, Daniel Bryan Lesnar. That would be a cool main event. Just both of them are MMA trained, but all, but of course the size and power would go to Lesnar. It's a set, but but here's here's the thing. Um. Uh, in Daniel Bryan's current state, you know, with his neck problems, um, I don't think it would be best to have Daniel Bryan take a su German suplex. In all honesty, I don't think anyone's taking taking good German suplexes because it fucks up your neck. Pardon my language, but but still, um, that's not the point. I would love to see something happen there. You know, it's the F five, the Kimura lock versus the Bell lock versus the Fly Knee. The fly, I, it's essentially like a. Battle of David vs. Goliath. Something I can definitely see. It's Suplex C versus the Yes Man. Come on. Come on. Who would survive? I hopefully... I, and honestly, in this situation, I'll, we'll be voting for the underdog, which would be Daniel Bryan. But then again, people will be saying, Lesnar's going to destroy you. Come on. He's freaking Brock Lesnar. The the Beast Incarnate. <laughs> that was terrible. But anyway, you get the, get the message. Definitely. I think we all want to see this match happen. I hope it happens soon. WRE, listen... Book it. All right, now we're getting to the to the top. Okay, number two, um, A Guerrero. Okay, I have put A on this list um, because um, I've said this during during the video on A Guerrero is that I see a little bit of Eddie in any high fire, no matter who it is. Where it was AJ Styles? Where it was freaking um, uh, Rey Mysterio or Evan Bourne or hell, even Daniel Bryan? Bryan, I see a little bit of A Guerrero in, in any of them. Okay, and in a sense, um, I would, this would be a pretty cool thing. It's essentially. Um, both technical grounded wrestlers. They both come from good humble beginnings. Um, but then again, um, here, here's the thing. A is also well adept in lucha. So essentially, I would count back back to what the thing on Kalisto would be a pretty cool mesh of the cool styles. But then again, um, I will, that would be pretty cool to see. You know, just get them down during gets just have a good good technical match. Just they could pop. They could take the air. I would love to see that. 
pretty much a good essential high flyers fight. That would be pretty cool. But it all boils down to the Gory Special versus the LaBelle Lock. Which is more devastating? They're both devastating. I've seen them be being applied. Uh, so, uh, yeah. It's pretty much that right there. So, uh, it would definitely be a classic, okay? But, of course, as you know, A is no longer with us. But, definitely, I would put that higher on this list no matter what, okay? Daniel Bryan against Agro any day. <laughs> now, before I get to my number one dream opponent for Daniel Bryan, I'm going to get through some honorable mentions. Um... Chavo Guerrero, why not? If I had mentioned A, my, why, why not Chavo? You know, my, you know, Battle of Heritage, you know. Uh, Booker T, why, why not? A veteran guy, uh, Matt and Jeff Hardy. I, I was thinking both Hardys. Um, then a couple, then two, two young guys, Suchik Alexander, who I've heard a lot of good, good things about Ring of Honor. And, and even Adam Cole, Cole, who, you know, another young talent, a former Ring of Honor world champion. Definitely see some, some magic there. But anyway... My number one dream opponent for Daniel Bryan is Chris Benoit. All right, yeah. That, that's another thing I want to want to point out is that Daniel Bryan, essentially, in my opinion, is kind of like the like this the, this generous equivalent of Chris Benoit. Well, minus the uh, whole you know dark backstory of Benoit, but that's not the whole point. And not to not to mention even Daniel Bryan mentioned in his book that that Chris Benoit was kind of kind of like kind of like was his inspiration, you know, where his, his style was modeled off of, you know, the fine headbutts, the rough, rugged style. It was all, it was all modeled off of Chris Benoit, you know. It's all it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I would definitely see something like this happen, but of course, um, it wouldn't because, as you know, the grim, the, the you know, death of Benoit and his family. But still, um. I would have been a very good solid clinic. Two a ballot two pure wrestlers. It would be so cool just to see them just mix it up. Some some sometime. But anyway, I don't want to think about that. But that would be pretty cool. The crippled cross face, the bell lock, all that there. Headbutt versus headbutt. <laughs> Why not? It's like watching two bulls button heads. That would be pretty cool, essentially. So, uh, yeah. So, those are my points for Daniel Bryan. If you have any, anyone that, 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 I, that I missed, let me, know, let me know all about it, okay? So, uh, that does it for today. Keep it tuned in for some more awesome videos. Take care, folks.